It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. On social media, I found a chart to be completely ridiculous. Of course, this chart talks about the various stages of anti-racism, and I figured, why not respond to it? Becoming anti-racist, fear zone. I deny racism is a problem. I avoid hard questions. I strive to be comfortable. I talk to others who look and think like me. Personally, I don't understand how people could just call themselves anti-racist unironically. Because honestly, I think that's the default position of most people in this country, and not just this country, but for the rest of the entire world. And so, to me at least, the whole entire idea of somebody calling themselves just anti-racist is pretty much sad because that's the standard de facto position of most people. As for denying about racism existing, I don't think most people deny that racism actually happens because racism is practically like everywhere. It does not matter the culture or the country. Racism pretty much exists everywhere. And so I don't think, of course, racism is bad. I don't want to, you know, give you guys that impression that I don't think it's bad. It actually is bad. However, the idea of eliminating racism altogether is just a pipe dream. Because no matter how much you teach people, of course, how bad racism is, you will never, ever, ever convince 100% of the population. So to convince 100% of the population that racism is actually bad, I think it's a pipe dream. As far as surrounding yourself with people that think like you and blah, 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 that's pretty much true for like a lot of political positions. Like no matter what kind of side you're on the political spectrum, you will always find people having some sort of echo chamber. And so I cannot really deny that whole entire factor on that end. Learning zone. I recognize racism is a present and current problem. I seek out questions that make me uncomfortable. I understand my own privilege in ignoring racism. I educate myself about race and structural racism. I am vulnerable about my own biases and knowledge gaps. I listen to others who look and think differently than me. I actually agree about the idea that institutionalized racism actually exists. However, it's not from, of course, like the typical social justice warrior standpoint. Because you see, most social justice warriors would say that institutionalized racism actually exists on a government level. However, that's not the case because according to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, no business or place should actually discriminate people based upon race and gender and so on. And of course, according to the ruling that was done by the Supreme Court, they cannot discriminate gay people either and so naturally there's like no sort of structural racism within the government or businesses or whatever however let's go to college campuses there's examples of people who go to college campuses and actually get discriminated on SAT tests based upon their race of course I'm talking about the whole entire case with like Harvard University and this other place where they actually deduct points on SAT scores based upon race. For the Asian, of course, they got less points. For white people, they had less points. However, they used those deducted points from those kind of groups to hoard black people. And of course, that's an example of institutionalized racism. Another example of institutionalized racism is the idea of separate dorms for black people or minorities because in college campuses right now they actually do that and to me that's actually really bad and really scary another example of this sort of institutionalized racism that i see is how these people at seattle have a whole entire separate meeting just for black people just because you know they're black and so obviously Obviously, institutionalized racism do in fact exist, however, not the same sort of level that most social justice warriors actually believe. Growth zone. 
I identify how I may unknowingly benefit from racism. Benefit from racism. Are you talking about like white people right now? Because it seems to me that this whole entire chart now just changed into all about white people. Because to me at least, like no white person today is actually guilty of the actions that their ancestors or whatever done. And so no, I don't buy for a single second that anybody benefits from a really dark past because most people today actually feel bad about the past. And so yeah, no one actually really benefits from this whole backstory that we have in a country. I promote and advocate for policies and leaders that are anti-racist. When you say anti-racist leaders, are you referring to the people on college campuses? Are you referring to the people at that Seattle place? Because guess what? To me at least, those people are just no different. No different whatsoever than the Jim Crow laws. They want segregation based upon race. So sorry, I don't want those kind of people in power. I just don't. I sit with my discomfort. I speak out when I see racism in action. I educate my peers how racism hurt our profession. That is true. Every single time I see an action done by progressive activists, I actually speak out against them every single time on my channel. I have like a huge ass catalog of videos just talking about how racist these progressive activists are. And honestly, I'll do it again and again and again until people actually realize just how racist they are. I don't let mistakes deter me from being better. I yield position of power to those who otherwise are marginalized. I surround myself with others who think and look differently than me. So that's the whole entire chart for you guys. Of course, on that chart, I'm like number two out of the street. But guess what? I honestly, really despise anti-racist activists. Oh my god, we cannot, you know, be colorblind because to be colorblind, you ignore racism. Oh my god, we want segregation for black people and minorities because, you see, black people and minorities can't, you know, be with white people and blah, 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 blah. I really despise anti-racist activists. I really do. That is why I can never, ever be like number three on that chart. Because those kind of people to me are like the biggest racists right now. Probably bigger than of course like the KKK and these other kind of far right groups. Because these people right here, they actually have power. They have power in the media. They have power in their activism. They have power in college campuses. This is why these people need to be opposed. These people are like the biggest racist scum I know right now. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you all next time.
Tyler. It's everyone's friend. It's 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 Tyler. It's everyone's friend.